So, hi, I'm, uh, I'm Lynn Hong. I am a gynecologic subspecialty pathologist here at Vancouver General Hospital. So my name is Carly, and I was diagnosed with stage 3 vulvar cancer in 2014. Okay. Uh, it was not HPV-related, which is often the case for this type of cancer, but mine yeah. was more of um, the way that I was conceived in utero, the way my cells didn't properly separate. HPV stands for human papillomavirus. Human papillomavirus are the most commonly sexually transmitted infections. HPV is usually harmless and resolves on its own without any treatment. However, some high-risk types of HPV can lead to cervical cancer, vulvar cancer, anogenital cancers, as well as certain cancers of the head and neck. We now have a provincial vaccination program, as do many Canadian provinces, which provides free HPV vaccination to children in grade 6. I did have, starting in 1998 to the early 2000, uh, reoccurring Bartholin gland cysts. And so we now think, I mean, you don't yeah. know it at the time, that all that trauma to the area eventually just caused cancer. Yeah, so I've had two battles now. Yeah. First diagnosed in 2014 and again in 2017. Yeah. And this last surgery, if I get it again, then it's like, I'm, I am gotta go. Right. Because they were so aggressive, like yeah. there should be no chance of cancer coming back with my body. Not this type of cancer. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so how did it all begin in 2014? Yeah, so I had had issues for a while. Um, I didn't have like bloody stools necessarily, yeah. but just like swelling and it was more of what you would feel when you would sit down okay. and I would go to the ERs and they would say oh here's some antibiotics you're right. gonna your cyst's right. gonna burst like the one did a few years ago and and I was like no I don't think this is it but I right. took the antibiotics you know you follow the doctor's orders right. and then in like probably about January February of 2014 mm -hmm. yeah. I went to the ER yeah. and the doctor was a gynecological specialist, so I felt okay. very comfortable with her. Yeah. But she told me I, that she thought I had warts. And I was like, I really appreciate your diagnosis. <laughs> However, I know my body. Right. I know, you know, yeah. my intimacy with who, what, how, and that is yeah. not the case. Right. And I often think like, had she really diagnosed me properly, mm -hmm that maybe I wouldn't have got as far into my level. It of, is common you know, for vulvar cancer patients to face hurdles getting earlier, a diagnosis. But if you yeah, have persistent and ifs, progressive but, symptoms, you know, that was be persistent like Carly was. was diagnosed in the Ask summer, for a referral to a women's health clinic where you so will be seen by a gynecologic oncologist. In your body. Yeah. Yeah. So after that emergency visit, I mean, how, did, how did the diagnosis come up after that? Because it sounds like you went to the emergency room, you knew something was wrong. Um, and, and then they sent you home, and then what happened after that? I was just dealing with pain every day, and unfortunately I was calling in sick to my work. Yeah. And I didn't know what was wrong with me. You right. know, my boss at the time knew that I was uncomfortable, right. but I was going to the ER all the time. Mm -hmm. I was calling in sick, and so yeah. I think my employer, yeah. I mean, I don't want to call them out, but I think they actually <laughs> thought I was you know, pulling their chain or mm -hmm. I was over exaggerating my symptoms. Right. When I was in the ER, they actually asked me to send proof that I was in the emergency room. I had to send a selfie. Uh, mm -hmm. And That's looking tough. back now in 2021 yeah. from 2014, the way employers have changed, I know yeah. that wouldn't happen today. Right. But at the time I was just like, wow, like something's wrong with me and I'm having to validate this to my employer. Right. So that was really hard. Yeah. It you sounds know? like it's tough from multiple angles. Yeah. Right? I wasn't China. comfortable at home. I wasn't comfortable at work. Right. And when you can hardly stand and sit and walk, the last yeah. thing that you can do is work. Right. And it's not yeah. like it's, you know, your elbow that you can put in a sling and you can right. go to work. It's right. just not the way it is. Yes. Yes. But I didn't totally know then, different. you yeah. know, but yeah. that's an, ended up being what was going on. Yeah. And then did you get referral after to, to, to get an eventual diagnosis yeah. or what sort of happened? Because it just, sounds like it sounds like quite a journey and quite a struggle it and was. it sounds like you've had to really advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and Unfo how, yeah, how Unfortunately, that happens, the self-advocacy aspect, yeah. right? Yeah. So my GP is amazing. He's been with me yeah. a long time, but he's not a miracle worker. He can't know every <laughs> right. cancer out there, every right. this, that, and the other. So I did get a referral, but unfortunately the referral was taking six months. And so I would call in and yeah. be like, hey, do you have any cancellations today? No, and I think they were just sick of me calling in. Oh. 
but you know i in my head i was like can't the pregnancy you know checkup of this lady just wait like i'm in pain i'm calling <laughs> yeah. you every day yeah. can you just measure her stomach later like i yeah. need to be seen yeah. and it never happened and so again i felt a little bit pushed aside or mm -hmm. not taken seriously right. so when i eventually was seen yeah it was like, I'm biopsying you right now, and yeah. we're gonna know in five days. I think you have cancer. Yeah. And wow. I was like, what is going on? Wow. Yeah. That's very big words to hear. And we're in July now. Yeah. It was end of June, early July when this all came to life. Right. So I had been living in pain yeah. with these tumors, which we didn't know were tumors at the time. Right. You know, uh, for, for quite some time. Yeah. Yeah. And so you got the biopsy results back? Yeah, and, on um, Friday. Do you, do you remember what happened from then? Like yeah, what were you told? I just remember she, and she was about my age. Yeah. I was 38 at the time. I was nearing my 39th birthday. Yeah. And she sat there with me and told me, and we cried together because yeah. I think she was like, I'm literally telling somebody who's right. my age that they're you yeah. know, gonna have this happen to them. And my mom was in another room and they yeah. told her and then we chatted again and then yeah. we had to, uh, go right into VGH for x-rays and scans and stuff. So we didn't have much time that day to to really really cope with it And yeah. we did tell you know my immediate family and my father and my brother yeah. And then we got home and we were just like what just happened like right. you have cancer like what right. yeah. and I think for me at least at that time the typical image of what a cancer patient right. was was right. not me you what know was it what was it like trying to tell your family members what kind of cancer you had and <laughs> yeah. and yeah cuz I, I i hear what you're saying Maybe yeah. you're young you're 38 yeah. and you look on the outside you look really mm -hmm. well and on mm -hmm. the inside you know that something's yeah. something's wrong uh, but how do you how do you explain that to your I mean it was members? awkward 100 <laughs> percent like I'm not gonna sugarcoat it yeah. um, I mean breast cancers come so far with awareness you see right. the NFL guys wearing their pink right. on breast, breast cancer awareness days but right. you know a below the belt cancer in general is yeah. not very spoken about be it cervical which has come a long way yeah. vulvar bowel what have you yeah. so I think anything below the belt is really hard to discuss with your friends yeah. and family. But ultimately they love you and yeah. if you share it in a way that you want them to follow you, yeah. like with confidence and with the right information, right. then generally people follow you back. Yeah. So I just said, this is what's going on. Clearly I'm unlucky, um, but right. I got to fight. And they were great. Everybody was great. I'm sure there was a lot of those people Googling, like yeah. what is this what's cancer? Yeah. Um, but in general, yeah. everybody was super, super supportive. So vulvar cancer, as you mentioned, it's it's a special cancer. One, because it's invisible and it's really hard to share your experiences with other people. And, um, and then the other aspect about vulvar cancer is that it's it's in an uncomfortable site and both physically as well as, um, you know, physically, mentally. Um, and so how how did you find that in terms of your own experiences with the physical emotional aspect of having a lower genital tract cancer and, mm -hmm. and what was your experience with your friends and family yeah i mean it was so painful i mean yeah. i'm not going to sugarcoat it yeah. you know um it was painful before diagnosis it was painful during treatment Right. And I mean, the pain gets better, of course, yeah. after the cancer is removed. But until right. then, yeah. I mean, the radiation right. does its job. Yeah. I needed it. Chemo right. wouldn't have done. I could have had 40 chemos and it wouldn't have shrunk the tumor enough. I needed the radiation yeah. for this. But it was agony. Like, I almost felt like I was shaking from the inside, which yeah. could have been some anxiety, too. But my skin peeled. Right. I mean, it's laughable today that it's kind of like a permanent bikini wax you know <laughs> like it, radiation does its job this is one way to look at it but right? yeah. not yeah. then right. you know what i mean right. so it's not pleasant yeah. not that any cancer is pleasant not right. that radiation in any form is pleasant right. but when you're putting it on a part of your body that is so sensitive to start right. you know it's not like a yeah yeah so it was awful absolutely yeah. awful um the first little you know five treatments i was like oh this is fun i'm gonna bake cookies and bring them to the <laughs> to the techs and he'll hear some jelly beans like i was super kind and right. then i would go in there and i would just be like dreading it even though right. it's quick it's only right. a couple minutes in its entirety um but painful 
and the healing is painful the right. skin you know regrowth is painful all that kind right. of stuff but no pain no gain i guess like you have yeah. to do it to keep your life right right and you've gone through two surgeries. You had one surgery initially um, with radiation and chemotherapy, and then you, you had a recurrence and you had another surgery. Can you tell us what your experience was like? Yeah, so the radical vulvectomy was the first surgery I went right. through after um, right. radiation and chemo. A radical vulvectomy is a surgery that removes the entire vulva, including the clitoris, vaginal lips, opening to the vagina, and nearby lymph nodes. It is commonly used to treat non-HPV related vulvar cancer. And they removed what tumor was there. Right. But I never really got margins. When Carly refers to margins, she is referring to the edge or border of the tissue removed during cancer surgery. The margin is described as an ostomy when the pathologist finds no cancer is cells at the edge of the, of the tissue, stool suggesting the that all of the cancer is a surgically has been created removed. opening in your abdomen so that allows an waste always to leave on your the table body. Because if they wanted the margins, they'd have to cut into my sphincter. Mm. And that's therefore why I would need a colostomy. Yeah. Um, but of course, nobody wants these things. Um, I don't regret not doing it then, mm -hmm. but I don't know if it would have stopped my reoccurrence. I can never really say if, if I had done that. Yeah. Although it would have been a different type yeah. of surgery at the time. So when right. the cancer reoccurred and I had pelvic exenteration, which is, right. I mean, I, it's kind of like gutting your insides and right. reconnecting and rebuilding whatever you need right. so that the cancer can't spread so you do have the margins. Right. And that was a big surgery. So yeah. I was cut open bra line to bikini line and things were taken out, things were reconnected in different ways, rebuilt, yeah. and when I woke up, I saw staples all the way down me, and I was swollen, and I was like, what yeah. just happened? Right. Because you're waking up, and you're seeing that you have this stool bag on you, and you're like, wow, like, yeah. you understand, but you don't understand until you see it. Right. And it was hard. As you mentioned, really trying to get good margin clearance. Yeah. Um, and unlike other anatomical sites, I mean, the vulva, it's one, it's such a sensitive genital, genital area, mm -hmm. and two, it's its close to other vital structures. It's yeah. close to the anal sphincter, it's close to the yeah. bladder, and it's really, really hard to treat. Yeah. Um, and sometimes they require really aggressive surgeries, mm -hmm. which can be really hard for patients. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it, I understand that it took a while to come to making the decision to go through with the pelvic exaggeration. Mm. Um, and and what how how is your life now that you've had it? Yeah. Um, like what is the the life after I the know, big the surgery? life after the big yeah. yeah. So I mean had my cancer not reoccurred, I don't yeah. know what would have happened, but what happened was that I needed that surgery. Right. And so the reconstruction part has definitely been the hardest for me right. to deal with. Um, the ostomy really is, is kind of a gift. Like yeah. well, there's lots of jokes in our community that we can drive while having a movement. We can watch TV and have it, <laughs> don't have to get up and pause the remote. There there's a go. lot of good stuff you yeah. can joke about. Yeah. Uh, when I'm old and gray, nobody's going to have to wipe my backside. So that kind of stuff was not a big deal. Right. But as a woman, having yeah. your vulva rebuilt is a big deal. And dilators are involved after surgery, and yeah, it's a lot to deal yeah. with physically. So I sometimes find that I divert from that. Like yeah. I'm like, I'm just gonna do ostomy awareness. Nobody right. wants to talk about vaginas, you know. Right. So, um, but it's been a challenge, yeah. absolutely, um, and it will always be a challenge for me yeah. moving forward. Uh, I'm not married or anything, but I, you know, I like to date and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, how's um, that been like? All around, it's been okay. You Good. know, I think yeah. everybody has something. Somebody yeah. might have six kids and six ex-wives. Somebody <laughs> might have a knee surgery. Somebody right. might have um, debt. I mean, we could list lots of examples. Yeah. And so, if you kind of talk about it sooner than later, and you have the right personality to match your own, yeah and understanding of your body, then it's okay. Yeah. So I don't sugarcoat it at all, you know? I mean, I wouldn't say it exactly what we're talking about right yeah. now in our initial yeah. conversation, <laughs> but I would say the type of cancer and I would yeah. say I have an ostomy and that's fine. But yeah. a lot of men are like also interested about, oh, what is an ostomy? And yeah. oh, what is that surgery? Yeah. 
And so being different isn't a bad thing. Yeah. And so I've kind of used my different life yeah. and circumstances to my advantage. Yeah. And I also lead the way I want people to follow. I've never, yeah. never had a bad interaction yet. And Good. it's been three and a half years since yeah. my surgery. That's yeah. Good. It's yeah. nice and reassuring to hear that mm -hmm. there are men and individuals out there that you can tell them about vulvar cancer yeah. and they're not going to run in the other direction yeah. uh, that yeah. have some engagement or curiosity sure. and care about trying to connect with you to figure out. And things just got different levels of importance in my life now, yeah. right? So I'm, I've always been okay to be single, but you're always like, oh, I want a wedding and oh, <laughs> I want to get a puppy with the boy, like, right, you know, all that kind of right. stuff. Whereas now I'm just like, I'm fine alone. My house is just the way I left it. Right. If somebody wants to join me in this journey, then great. So mm -hmm. I just don't take things for granted. Yeah. And I just live to live. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And I just, I don't really care if right. somebody wants to be with me or not. Because right. I'm just fine the way I am by myself. Absolutely. And if somebody can come in and get me that wedding in that blush pink dress with the red lip, then I would be really into it. <laughs> yeah, but until yeah. that happens, yeah. I'm fine. I've never understood gut disease like I do because of that. Like people who have IBD, IBS, etc., yeah. they have, you know, washroom needs all the time and that was me. And there was times when I was on my way to that washroom and it it came out. So that life was awful. Yeah. So having that ostomy is like a gift. It gives you your life back and it gives you the margins. So literally it's like saving your life. Yeah. Radiation therapy uses high energy beams to treat cancer. It works by damaging cancer cells and making it hard for them to reproduce. However, it also affects normal cells, which can result in side effects such as what Carly is describing. Diarrhea and rectal discomfort is one of the most common side effects of radiation therapy to the pelvis. So having an ostomy has really been a gift yeah. and it's saved my life. Yeah. That's the only reason I don't have cancer today yeah. is because I got those margins aggressively. Yeah. But yeah. And I know that you are quite an advocate for ostomies mm -hmm. in Canada. And can you can you tell us more about that or for patients that want to know more about that for who sure. are facing that decision yeah. and whether or not to, to get one? I didn't really get much brochures. I didn't get like, hey, yeah. here's Susie, go talk to her. I didn't have any sort of meetup programs. Right. So I found somebody locally, but I'm an outgoing human. Not everybody is. Right. And so I definitely find the, you know, branching of patient to support system lacking. And then when I had the surgery, I just found out about Ostomy Canada, right. which therefore directed me to my Vancouver chapter. And then I kind of met people that way and yeah. just on Instagram, hashtag Ostomy Bag. And that's right. kind of really where I yeah. learned a lot. And that's why I created my channel yeah. is because I thought, it's not just about posing in a cute outfit, showing your ostomy bag. It's about your skin. Because right. once I came home from the hospital, I was like, how do I do with this? Like, yeah. I used to use toilet paper. Well, now what do I use with this, right? right. So you have to learn. Right. And different stomach shapes, different stoma sizes, all these things. And so I just felt I was thrown to the wolves. And so I unfortunately had to find all that support myself. Mm -hmm. um, so I created my platform to kind of help people do exactly that. Right. And it's not just about looking pretty in a nice outfit, um, hiding your pouch or bag, you know, bag, what bags, right. a big trend. Right. Um, it's about living with it. It's about, can you swim? You know, can you be intimate with your partner? Right. How do you change it? All those types of things. So that is kind of what my channel Ostimate and the city right. spinoff of Sex in the City um, is all <laughs> about. Sense. It's all yeah. about that. It's about yeah. the reality, not right. just about the image, because right. we can all make a pretty image. It's not hard right. to do that. So that's kind of where it is. And from yeah. there, I volunteer with my Vancouver chapter yeah. and yeah. try to do what I can to help the next person who's getting surgery. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's fantastic. I've seen your website. Yeah. So. <laughs> so what do you think is the most important and maybe it'll be hard to name one, mm -hmm. but the most important aspect of survivorship we have to acceptance. I know it sounds so simple because it's not, but I've read many posts from people, be it cancer or ostomy related. And they're like, I can't accept that I have cancer. I can't accept that I have an ostomy. Right. It's your reality. It is what it is. You know, and if you try to pretend it doesn't exist, you're going to go down a really dark hole. So to accept it and 
not own it because nobody right. wants to be ill, but it's your new job. And until your treatment's over, until your surgeries are over, that is your job. Right. There's still, you know, work to do after because the body doesn't just wake up and heal. Right. I've been off work for most of my cancer journey. I've only worked a year and a half since 2014. I remember when the doctor cried with me on my first diagnosis. I think that seeing her care and the vulnerability from her really yeah. was impactful. We were in a more of like a private place in the hospital, so right. you know it's a different thing. But right. just showing some vulnerability, like everybody's a human. Yeah. And I know the doctors and nurses go home and they probably tell their spouses or their friends, like, you know, this person had this and that, and that they yeah. probably struggled too. Like I would need therapy if I was a doctor. I'm not gonna lie, yeah. you know. Sorry. But to try to relate to people and say, I might not do, know the answer, but let's find you the answer right. instead of just sending you home. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. That was definitely a tough, tough part. Yeah. In the very beginning. For um, sure. So as a vulvar cancer researcher, so I, should, I do research in, in really all, all aspects of gynecologic cancer, but particularly vulvar cancer. Um, what do you think we need to do for vulvar cancer? Do you have any, if you were, so I'm sitting here in front of you, mm -hmm. how can I make your life easier? I mean, I did go for my pap smears and stuff, yeah. but something obviously was missed. I don't know, but I don't think you can ever really detect every single cancer out there, even if you're a specialist, right? The cancer can hide behind things like, yeah. you know, the size of a freckle, right? right? So, Sneaky. but I think, when a patient is saying like, I know it's not warts, I know it's right. not a cyst, right. maybe they should do a little more than just give you an antibiotic, right? right? And also when somebody's calling into an office every day and they need help, take yeah. that person seriously. Yeah. I'm not saying the other people don't matter, but I'm not calling every day just because. Yeah. I'm calling because I need help. Right. So the one thing I kind of found was, at least if you, unless you go private, Right. is that that connection of really knowing who needs what first because right. everybody matters yeah you know, it's nobody absolutely. does not matter mm -hmm. it's just a matter of who needs it first right. so i don't i don't know if there's anything anyone could have done for me to avoid this i mean when they took tissues and biopsied them and stuff yeah. some of my colon tissue was mixed in with my vulvar tissue so i mean things have been going on there for a long time and i was 38 like i'd clearly right. seen the doctor many times <laughs> before i'd you know yeah had my diagnosis but right. yeah I, I, it's yeah. Just, just a matter of how can you help people when they right. need the help and that doctor that didn't diagnose me properly I wish she had done more right. I wish she had biopsied me or something right something for a scan something because right. that was another almost nine months of my life that I lived with cancer I wanted to thank you so much for coming out mm -hmm. um, to speak to myself and speak to all the other cancer survivors particularly women dealing with vulvar cancer mm -hmm. and i can't imagine the journey that you've had to go through but i am really impressed and really amazed that you're such an amazing advocate mm -hmm. and that you're willing to share your story and really help strengthen the community mm -hmm. of gynecologic cancer survivors to decrease your risk of vulvar cancer Get the HPV vaccine, as some forms of vulvar cancers are HPV related. If you are concerned that you have vulvar cancer, please ask for a referral to a women's health clinic or a gynecologist. Ask the provider you are seeing, would a swab or a biopsy be appropriate? If you have vulvar cancer, ask your gynecologic oncologist, is my vulvar cancer HPV related? and how does the HPV status of my vulvar cancer affect my treatment? Less aggressive surgery has been shown to be more appropriate in HPV-related vulvar cancers, whereas more aggressive surgery is associated with improved survival in non-HPV-related vulvar cancer.